Welcome to Psyched for Psychology, a Nystrom & Associates podcast. Our hosts, Michelle Iverson and Brett Cushing, are both licensed marriage and family therapists at Nystrom & Associates. Each week, they talk about all things mental health and therapy, and you get a chance to dive into specific psychology topics that help promote personal development and wellness. And now, here are your hosts, Michelle and Brett. Hello, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Michelle Iverson, licensed marriage and family therapist and the co-host for the Psyched for Psychology podcast. My co-host Brett is off today, but thankfully we've been really lucky um, that we have a really wonderful guest interviewee today. Um, She will be here talking with us about the topic of cannabis and marijuana. And this is Cheyenne Fendrick. Um, She's an LADC, that's a licensed alcohol and drug counselor. Um, Cheyenne's worked in the recovery community for five years. She was a treatment technician at a women's substance use residential treatment facility. And she's been a LADC at Nystrom in our substance use disorder program. Thank you so much. And thanks for being on with us today, Cheyenne. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. So how did you end up, I mean, you've been in this field for a while now. How did you end up getting involved in this work? Yeah, so that's a really good question. So I have been around substance use disorder and mental health for my entire life, whether it it was my friends using in high school or, you know, just being around people who come from different backgrounds than myself. So I've also seen people, you know, necessarily not being treated the most ethically. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to help people as I grew up and I could not be a doctor or a nurse because I can't handle blood. (laughs) So I, I always had like the heart that I wanted to help people and addiction and mental health is just a really big problem in this country Mm -hmm. and it's something that i want to be a part of something really amazing to help other people yeah i think that's something that gets a lot of people into wanting to work in this field a big drive to help maybe also the desire to be away from blood or anything like that (laughs) yes (laughs) and uh to be able to you know really apply a lot of you know what we've we've seen right and dealt with in our lives and be able to help other people through that absolutely yeah great so um i can imagine um for a little context we both live and work in the state of minnesota And there's been some recent uh, news in Minnesota um, in which uh, cannabis and marijuana has now become, I mean, it's always been a topic of discussion, um, but even more so after the, from what I hear, accidental passing (laughs) of some uh, uh, THC products. And so with that, we kind of figured this would be a timely topic um, to learn more from you, Cheyenne, about your knowledge around um, cannabis, uh, marijuana, and so forth. Um, so yeah, sorry. Um, so basically I guess I can start with kind of talking about what marijuana is. So it refers to the dried leaves, flowers, stems, and seeds from the cannabis sativa or cannabis indica plant. Um, so the THC that is in that plant is what causes the the euphoric effects. So, Mm -hmm. um, the marijuana that you would get, you know, on the street versus the medicinal marijuana from dispensaries are very different. Um, there is a lot of different strains and different types of marijuana in that aspect. But when it comes to a treatment perspective, we are still treating it as any other drug. Mm -hmm. Um, we do here at Nystrom, we accept medical marijuana, but, um, in order to have that, we have to have a, a release of information for the doctor that is prescribing it to you. And we need an active copy of the prescription. Mm -hmm. So that way we can monitor it and make sure that you are using it as prescribed. Um, Another thing to think about is if you have outside um, outside people in your corner, like probation or CPS, they can have their own kind of way of dealing with that. So it's really important that if you are somebody who is on medical marijuana and have workers, that you're communicating with them right away. Mm -hmm. Um, Here at Nystrom, like I said, we do accept it, but we treat it um, like any other substance. So yes, marijuana is legal in some areas, Mm -hmm. but on the federal level, it is still illegal. So if you are somebody who is in here and you do not have your medical card, you still cannot use it. It's just like alcohol. Alcohol may be legal, but still causes problems. And if you are in treatment, you cannot be drinking. Yeah, because that's a question we sometimes get, right? Well, in some areas, in some ways, it might be a legal substance. 
Um, but we also just generally, I feel I get a lot as a therapist questions of, um, it's just a plant. How could this be addictive? Right. So there, um, there's of course pros and cons Mm -hmm. to medical marijuana. If there wasn't any, it wouldn't be legalized Mm -hmm. for some diseases, but ultimately at the end of the day, we need to be able to handle life without substances. And I know that sounds really vague, but (laughs) we need to be able to go home after a long day of work and be able to talk about what we Mm -hmm. experienced or, you know, go on a walk or do something Mm -hmm. else rather than I need to go home and drink a bottle of wine or smoke a bowl, like a weed, you know, like these things are all Mm -hmm. kind of band-aids for a bigger problem. And I think by using these substances, we're not coping with the mental health aspect of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's hard to completely understand that marijuana does have negative effects because like you said, we are in a world that there's things such as like methamphetamines, heroin, fentanyl, you know, all these really big drugs right now. But at the end of the day, if you are using marijuana to cope with your emotions or you have to have it to eat or sleep mm-hmm. or any of these things, that, that's a problem because there's a there's an underlying factor that we're kind of covering up there. So that's when it becomes a problem. Right. It's becoming a problem yeah. when we're using it to cope, when we're using it to self-medicate. That tends to be uh, sometimes something that's a little eye-opening for people to realize I am self-medicating through this. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely. And also at the end of the day, even when Minnesota, if they ever do legalize it completely mm-hmm. on the federal level, it is still illegal. It is still mm-hmm. um, a scheduled drug. So that is something to keep in mind. You know, even if it does become legalized, there could still be legal implications mm-hmm. from that. Yeah, absolutely. What do you think about substances like um, Delta 8, Delta 9, synthetic marijuana, Um, Again, I've heard from people who they're like, well, you know, I can go down to the shop, I can go pick it up. Why would that be a big deal? So things like Delta 8 and Delta 9 have been around forever. Mm -hmm. So um, it kind of started out with the K2 and spice Mm -hmm. trends uh, from quite a few years ago. And you can go to like smoke shops and pick them up. Um, And right on the label, it says not for human consumption. And that is because... The FDA was like, this is not safe. Mm-hmm. We don't know what you're putting in here. So they got around it by saying not for human consumption. But everybody knew that if you used it, X, Y, and Z would happen. Mm-hmm. So now it's kind of the same thing with this Delta 8, Delta 9. Um, you know, people are saying it's like CBD, but there is amounts of THC in it. Mm-hmm. Um, I have had clients who have tested positive for THC after using Delta 8. And ultimately, I've been at the end of the day, there's no way to regulate what is in Delta 8, Delta 9, and any other synthetic kind of um, synthetic marijuana. So that is dangerous because we do not know what we are putting into our bodies. Mm -hmm. And that is something really important to remember. They can change one little thing in the ingredients list and try and put it right back on the shelf. And it's just kind of an endless cycle of just because it's at the gas station and you can buy it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good and that there's not going to be negative implications from it. Right. I've heard about that where it's essentially a game of legal catch up every single time that we identify. It's like identifying the chemistry to it. We identify it and it ends up getting, um, you know, banned and it's illegal, a small little change in the chemistry and suddenly, well, we're back. It, it's not technically legal, but it's in the gray zone and suddenly it can go right back into the stores again. Yeah. yeah. And, and that is kind of scary because not only do we already know like what's not in it, mm-hmm. but they're changing things every single time. So as soon as we get an understanding of what happens when you use X amount or Y amount, now they're completely changing it. I mean, mm-hmm. there's been people who have gone into psychosis, who have been hospitalized, um, who have extreme like vomiting and diarrhea. Like there's so many effects and just because you use it once and you don't have these effects that doesn't mean that it can never happen because there's no way to regulate how much of anything you're getting Mm -hmm. i actually worked at um the university of minnesota as a part of like their first episode psychosis program and i cannot tell you the number of people when i've said these substances can actually trigger psychosis And not just like, a well, you know, I'm high right now and I might be hallucinating. No, like that is now out of your system and you are continuing to experience hallucinations, delusions, paranoia that aren't going away. Absolutely. Yeah. And then people just they don't believe me. It's like we see it. We see it all the time. 
I mean, if you think about it, even marijuana um, at one point was listed as a hallucinogen. And when you are putting things in your body that are like that, since there's no regulation of chemicals, Mm -hmm. you have no idea what we're putting into our lungs and what goes to our brain. And absolutely, there is short and long-term effects of using anything that is synthetic. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And even if you don't, you use substances like these and you don't experience psychosis, it can still increase depression, anxiety, a number of other issues as well. Absolutely. Yeah. So how often, especially working in our um, treatment program, how often do we see cannabis use disorder happening and how would somebody go about getting help for that? Yeah, so um, I honestly have seen quite the rise in cannabis use disorder diagnosis in probably the past like six to eight months. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that a lot of people who come in our doors for cannabis use are often on probation for either being caught with paraphernalia or having a substance or um, driving while under the influence (laughs) and things like that. Um, To be very honest, it's not very often that we get people in here just for cannabis, Mm -hmm. but it is a more and more rising thing. Um, so we also kind of have this little score sheet that we use as substance use counselors. And there, as we're doing like your assessment and things like that, we kind of ask ourselves and some of them is like, are you taking in, in larger substances over longer periods of time? Are you unable to stop using? Do you have cravings? Are you mm-hmm. going through withdrawals? Um, are you giving up important social events? Are you having problems with your family and friends? And things like that. And the more questions we ask, we kind of get a better understanding of that. And that's how we get to the point if you are mild, moderate, or severe. And the more um, of these questions you kind of hit the mark on, that's how we diagnose that. So I would definitely say that it is becoming more common. Um, I would say over half of the people on my roster right now have cannabis use disorder on some level. So it's definitely something that is on the rise. Mm -hmm. And um, it's often... Um, with another substance, so whether it's alcohol, uh, like opiates, methamphetamines, and things like that. And um, to kind of get in the door and get help for that, you can call Nystrom here or any facility that does what we call comprehensive assessments, formerly known as Rule 25s. Um, any place that has healthcare generally usually has some kind of assessor on. Um, we at nice from here. We it's really nice because everything's kind of a one-stop shop. You come, you can call the admissions line. They'll get you scheduled. You'll meet with a substance use provider, whether it's telehealth or in person, and then uh, we can get you right into group. We have mental health services. We have peer recovery support specialists. Um, just about anything you can think of. So um, it's definitely it's it's a lot of questions that you get asked, but it's pretty easy to kind of get in the door and get that help. Yeah, tell me about peer recovery support specialists. What do they do? Yeah, so that's probably one of my favorite things about Nystrom because I am really big on like peer support and sober support when you're in recovery. So we have a group of designated people who are in recovery themselves. So whether it be alcohol or another substance, um, they're in long-term recovery. Mm -hmm. So we set them up with our clients on an individual basis and they give them any resources that they can possibly need from meetings, um, like financial assistance, housing assistance, if you need anything like your kiddos, um, I even had a client once who got open mic night um, <laughs> options for around the area. Nice. It was important to him. So, and it's also just um, another person to kind of lend a hand out to help because mm-hmm. I, I understand that there's that, that gap of, you know, sometimes being able to relate to somebody who's quote unquote in a authority figure and, you know, having a peer versus having your counselor, maybe mm-hmm. you feel more comfortable, you know, expressing things to them versus me. And I just want to make sure that on every level that we are giving you all the resources that we can possibly give you. Yeah. That that, I t- again, the, yeah. yeah. The more resources you give somebody and the more help and like, get them, you know, on a better next step forward, the more likely they are to be in recovery for longer. Right. That idea of somebody with lived experience and has succeeded, right, gotten through treatment is now on the other side of it. And to be able to be right there with you, right, throughout your journey as you're getting help, too. So what kind of ends up bringing some people in? Sometimes the cannabis use is combined, paired with the use of another substance. But what ultimately do you find tends to bring people in treatment where they finally feel ready to seek help? Yeah, so um, 
That's kind of a tough question because Mm -hmm. um, every single person who comes to the doors obviously has their own reason. But I would say the top two reasons would be for legal troubles Mm -hmm. um, as part of their recommendations to either, you know, like make probation happy or to stay out of incarceration. And the second is um, for themselves and their loved ones, you know, if they're a parent Mm -hmm. and they want to be like better for their kiddos or they're just noticing problems with their friends and family due to their use. Um, that's another really big push for people to come in and get help as well. Yeah. What would be like um, some signs uh, for people to recognize that maybe it's time to go and seek help? Yeah. Um, if you find yourself asking a lot of people for money because you can't mm-hmm. keep up with your habit, if you are noticing that you are no longer doing things that you enjoy, whether that be, you know, going on a walk or playing mm-hmm. video games or listening to music. Um, If you wake up right away in the morning and you're looking to get high, that's a big red flag. Mm -hmm. Um, If you notice that you are having some strain with your friends and family and your loved ones, um, if you're getting into legal trouble or you're hanging out with, you know, people that you've gotten in trouble with before, you know, anything like that Mm -hmm. are some pretty big red flags that you should look out for. Absolutely. All right. So what do you think? Is there anything else that would be helpful for people to know about treatment. If they are seeing these signs, they're ready to get help. Um, that would be good for them to know, especially around cannabis and marijuana use. Yeah. So, um, first there is a lot of things out there to help you. First mm-hmm. of all, there's, I know oftentimes when people hear they are, um, in, or my apologies, treatment, <laughs> they think long-term inpatient and mm-hmm. that's absolutely not the truth. There is inpatient programs, of course, but there's also outpatient, and that is what I do here at Nystrom. Um, We also have mental health services. We have counselors and therapists here who are, like, specialized on certain things. So we Mm -hmm. have EMDR. We have, um, like, family-specific. We have counselors who work with children. Um, Anything that you can probably imagine we have here. We also have medication management because sometimes we need that extra little bit of help. Mm-hmm. Um, we have family therapy and things like AA and a support group meetings are also helpful. Um, and another thing to remember is here at Nystrom, we have different levels of care. That's what we call it. Um, so I do what we call a 2.1 level of care group, and that is group three times a week for four hours in an individual setting. Um, oftentimes when people are going to 2.1, they're just coming out of inpatient, or this is like their first time through outpatient and Um, we'll usually start them at 2.1 and that we go over things such as like family relationships, grief and loss, mental health, how substances affect the body and so on and so forth. And that's between eight to 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. And then what we do after that is we step them down to a 1.0 level of care. And that is when they have group once a week and meet with their counselor once a week. So um, those are two pretty good options that we have here. And lastly, we have something called driving with care and that's kind of an educational, um, class that you kind of take like if you were to get a DWI or if you're kind of on the verge of having some problematic drinking or drug use that's where you would kind of be recommended great yeah so there's different different avenues for everybody so it's Mm -hmm. definitely not a one shoe fits all kind of thing right and we just built like a brand new residential facility up in Big Lake Minnesota have you been out there to check it out I have not but I have looked at like the virtual um walkthrough and it's absolutely beautiful it's beautiful yeah, because sometimes people, we need 24-7 support. Um, just with, yeah, nothing wrong with that. No. Nope. And, and that's sometimes, um, that's what you really need to kind of get your foot in the door. Mm-hmm. Um, with inpatient, you know, you have housing, you have safe housing, you have, you know, three meals a day, you have that support, you have that security. And that's okay, you can need those at that time. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody needs a little bit of help sometimes. Absolutely. And I'm just thankful that in Minnesota we have a lot of resources like that because Minnesota is actually like number one in rehabilitation services. It is crazy the difference even from here to Iowa. I have family in Iowa and there's no treatment centers. Really? It's just That's crazy. So, like, wow. Yeah, it's it's night and day difference. So I'm mm-hmm. really thankful to kind of be a part of something in a state that is really like on the side of reform. Wonderful. Good. Well, is there anything else that you want to share about the, um, we call it SUD, and that's just short for Substance Use Disorder Program. Um, Anything more about the SUD program that you wanted to share? Yeah, um, 
First of all, if you do want to get connected with programming here, you can call 1-844-6978-766 to get an appointment scheduled. And even if you're not here for SUD, you can do mental health and anything, or you can go to nystermcounseling.com and request an appointment. And something that I really wanted to take a little bit of time to talk about is how Nystrom is doing hybrid. Mm -hmm. And the reason that I want to talk about that is because I am originally from Southern Minnesota and there's not a whole lot of resources down there for substance use or mental health. So if there was one good thing that came out of COVID is that we, as to my understanding as a company, we're kind of sticking with this hybrid model. Mm -hmm. And what that means is you can choose to come in person or you can do it telehealth. So you can be in the comfort of your own home and receiving these services. And the reason why that's so important is because if somebody, let's say Mankato is their closest location and they live two hours away, they're not gonna to drive to Mankato three times a week. But with this hybrid, we're able to still help people all over the state of Minnesota, even if they cannot be in person. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something that is really cool and really special and it's maybe giving people access to care that previously went to have it. Oh, and people are taking advantage of it, which is wonderful. It's been that's so brilliant. helpful in so many situations where you know, the person needing the help and even as a clinician, like we feel stuck if we can't have more flexibility and how do we get care to that person? So this right. has been helpful. Good. Well, what other advice information do you have for people that are listening and joining us today? Um, just don't be scared to ask for help if mm. you need it, whether it be mental health or substance use. Um, we are not here to judge you. Um, every single person has their flaws. Mm -hmm. And something that I tell my clients right away when they come into my group is I'm here to be your biggest cheerleader, but you need to give me something to cheer for. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to be, you know, that person that has your back no matter what, but you need to show me that you're doing these things. And also everybody has a seat at my table. I don't care where you come from, what you've done, who you are, you have a seat at the table, you are welcome here. Mm -hmm. And those are two really important things that I think everybody should know that there's no shame in asking for help because we all need it at some point. I really, really love that message. E even just you saying that really reminded me of something that I've talked about with a lot of people who have used unhealthy coping skills to get through. And I think about it's a story. It's a really cool story about somebody feeling like they're drowning in a raging river. And a log comes and floats along next to them. Well, nobody's going to fault you for grabbing onto that log. It was the only thing keeping your head above water, getting you through difficult times. Nobody yeah. will judge you for that. And sometimes it is like this unhealthy coping skill. There's lots of different kinds of them. Any kind of substance use is only just one of those that it could be. Um, we will never judge you for having grabbed onto it. But now that the waters are calmer, let's figure out how to help you let go. Right. Let's help you not get back in that crazy river and need mm -hmm. a log again. Exactly. Great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much um, for joining us today on the podcast. And thank you all listeners um, for joining us as well today, too. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our Psyched for Psychology podcast. We will continue to keep having new episodes being released every Tuesday morning. Uh, you can find us on any major podcast streaming platform and follow us for new episodes. You can also, as always, email your comments to podcast at nystromcounseling.com and let us know any future topics that you would be psyched to hear us talk about. Again, you can learn about us, all of our available mental health and substance use services by going to nystromcounseling.com. Thank you so much for joining. We're psyched to talk to you again soon. Thank you as always for listening and please be sure to leave us a review. While this podcast can't be a replacement for therapy, we hope you enjoyed our discussion today and join us again next time. Nice German Associates is always available to those who are struggling. If you find yourself in need of support and help, please check us out at nicestermcounseling.com.